everyone, welcome. Today I'm going to talk to you about Unit 6, Introduction to Quadratic Functions, Day 25, Graphing the Standard Form, Part 2. The question we're going to ask ourselves while thinking about and working on this lesson is what is important to pay attention to when writing quadratic functions in standard or factored form based on their graphs. And we're going to use the slider feature on Desmos to work through the explore portion of this lesson. So this video jumps right to the explore. You should create, uh, complete the introduction and launch either before watching this video or separately um, with your class. So right here is a link to the graphing calculator. So we're gonna go ahead and click that link to have it accessible. And the, the directions say, use the Desmos graphing calculator to complete the activity. Record your observations, including screenshots or photos of your work, if helpful. Okay. So, the instructions say graph y equals x squared, then experiment with adding different linear terms. For example, we add 4x, 20x, or negative 50x. So let's hop on over to the calculator. Let's type in our parent function. Here is the original um parent function for a quadratic equation. And I'm going to annotate on here. Give me one second. The original quadratic function has a vertex of 0, 0. Oh, why is this not annotating? There we go. It has a vertex of 0, 0, and it has an x-intercept of 0, 0. The vertex is the lowest point on the graph or the highest point. It's either the minimum or the maximum, and the x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis. X-intercept, right? Makes sense. So we're going to look at what happens when I change, when I add a linear term or subtract a linear term to this. And so, the standard form of a quadratic function is ax squared plus bx plus c. This is the standard form. We're only going to work with x squared right now, so a coefficient of 1 here, and we're not really looking at any constant terms. We're only looking at the linear term. Think to yourself, why is that called the linear term? Right? That's kind of something to keep in mind, why we're calling that the linear term. And it's because there's, there, this is, if we just graphed y equals bx, right, that's a linear function. This is a linear function right here. Adding x squared to it now is turning this into a quadratic function. So I'm going to add a slider for b. And this is going to help us see what happens when we change that linear term, what happens to the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So here's the original one. When b was 0, we just had x squared. What happens, right, when I add 4? Take a moment to jot that down because it's asking you to write some observations. What happens when I add 4x? What happens to the vertex? What happens to the x-intercepts? Do you notice any relationships or patterns here? So, for example, here, I'm seeing that there's an x-intercept at 0, 0, but I'm also seeing one at negative 4. Hmm, 4 and negative 4. Is that something to think about, maybe? The vertex is negative 2, negative 4. We're only talking about the x-coordinate of the vertex, so the negative 2. What do you notice about where the negative 2 falls? We're saying that we're our, our x-intercepts are at 0 and negative 4, and our x-coordinate of our vertex is at negative 2. Do you see a relationship happening there? Okay, then it says try out 20x. Okay, I'm going to change this. I'm going to make this go all the way to 20. And the next one is negative 50, so I'm going to make that go all the way to negative 50. What happens when it's 20? Right, is that what it asks, 20x? Yeah, x squared plus 20x. I'm going to zoom out. Hmm. 
what are my two x intercepts? Well, I see it stayed at zero, zero. Now it's at negative 20, zero. Do you see a relationship happening here? What about the x coordinate of the vertex? Negative 10. So I'm at negative 20, zero, and now I'm at negative 10. Hmm, interesting. Take a moment and think. When I make the linear term a negative 50, what do you think the x-intercepts are going to be? The x-coordinates of the x-intercepts are going to be. What do you think the x-coordinate of the vertex might be? Let's zoom out. Well, it looks like it's 25 for the vertex. What about the intercepts? Can you guess what they are? 50 and 0. And then the x-coordinate of the vertex is 25. Do you see a relationship? Do you see a pattern? Let's try one more. What if I change this to, let's say, let's make it 2. Let's just go all the way to 2. Oops. What do you think is going to happen when I go to 2? I'm zooming in. What are the x-intercepts? Well, it's still 0, 0. So I'm noticing that for all of these, one of the x-intercepts stays at 0, 0. Now this one is going to be negative 2. 2, negative 2. What's this? Negative 1 is the x-coordinate. So 0 to negative 2, negative 1 falls right between. That should be an observation. You should be noticing a pattern that's happening here. And that's what you can jot down here. What are the observations? What do you notice about the x-intercepts? What do you notice about the x-coordinate of the vertex when you change this linear term? Now let's look at y equals, take a minute and write that down and if you need to pause the video, that's fine. Now let's take a look at what happens with y equals negative x squared. What happens when I add different linear terms there? Does it work the same? So I'm just gonna change this to negative. First notice, what happened to the graph? Did you know it was gonna flip upside down? Do you remember that from a previous lesson? When we make that a term negative, the graph flips upside down. What happens when we have b at 20? Well, take a look here. When b is 20, when we're doing negative x squared plus 20, we still have the vertex at zero, sorry, the x-intercept at zero, zero, and now this x-intercept is at 20, 0. That's 20, that's 20. Interesting. What do you think this is going to be? 10, right in between. What if I go to negative 40? What do you think is going to happen? 0, 0 still. You probably guessed that. Negative 40, 0. Interesting. What is this going to be? T negative 20. Good job if you guessed that right. So I want you to say to yourself, hmm, how is it different when we're working with negative x squared and we change the b term versus positive x squared and we change the b term? How does, how do you find, how do you, where can you see the x-intercepts from the equation? Where can you see, or how could you figure out the vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex from the equation? These are all observations you can jot down here. And you can pause for a moment if you need to, to go ahead and jot that. After completing this section, you're going to come to part uh, slide C, where you're using your observations that we just talked about to help you complete this table without graphing. So think to yourself, do you know at least one of the x-intercepts? When you have a, uh, x squared plus bx or x squared minus bx, what do you know one of the x-intercepts will always be? Can you figure out the other one? Pay attention to if the first term has a negative coefficient to help you figure out the other one. 
Once you have the two x-intercepts, think about that x-coordinate. Where does the x-coordinate fall in relation to the two x-intercepts? If you need to use the graphing calculator to help you, please definitely use it, or at least just use it to check your work and verify that you have the correct answer for these. See if your predictions and observations are accurate. After completing this, you can go ahead and answer this question, uh, do this one right here. Some quadratic expressions have no linear terms. Find the x-intercepts and the x-coordinates of the vertex of the graph representing each equation. If you get stuck, try graphing. So then you can go ahead and try these two. And if you're not sure how to do it without graphing, use the graphing calculator to help you figure it out. Make observations and notice any special relationships that exist and how you could do it in the future without graphing. Okay? And after completing this, you should have time to eventually debrief with your teacher and your class and reflect on the work you've done. Excellent work.